Okay. Good. I see this time serving and started. Okay, so we are here for a virtual discussion about SEA in Trinidad and Tobago, and we're just considering whether the disruptions caused by COVID-19 are a blessing in disguise, an opportunity for us to decide to do things differently in terms of how we manage that transition from primary education to secondary education for children. At some point during this talk, people may or may not jump in, but for now we're starting with Daryl Joseph, Managing Director of Josal Consulting, but more importantly, Hi. father of four, and also Dennis Allen, father of three, former PTA what? boss. What? Father what? of four? What did I miss? <laughs> Trust me, I, <laughs> if it wasn't there, you blinked twice, you'd have missed it. <laughs> I'm behind. I'm behind. Two fathers of four, and I am Cedric. Yeah, he, he busy, he busy. I am Cedrian Martin, <laughs> uh, mother of one. So let me let me let you all launch, Dennis. Um, you started this conversation on social media. Just g give me the why. Give me what sparked this thought. Like you said, uh, welcome to anybody viewing it now live or uh, when we post it later on or whatever the case may be. Um, Sajan, thank you for hosting this meeting. And uh, Daryl, thank you for joining in. You know, you really bring a certain amount of starch to this thing, both of you. Um, <laughs> Pleasure. What happened is this. I saw in the newspaper $20 million or $25 million to go to teachers to come back out to school to do um, SEA for the, these kids. And, and I was like, what? Well, what? No, 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 no. If we go and spend that kind of money, best we scrap the whole thing down and start over from scratch. Full blue screen, bang, reset, full. Um, so my post really was kind of meant to provoke a conversation, and to a certain extent it did, um, about why we should keep it, why we should leave it alone, let it continue, or why we should just take it apart. And even if it's just to look at it, to see what's going on, and change the whole the whole paradigm for our youth. That was what started this thing, um, and that's where that's where we are right now. So we're going to conversation from that starting point, moving forward. Right, um, Daryl, you have three older kids that have been through the process. One more on the way. Mm -hmm. Give me your mm -hmm. impression of that SE experience as a parent, positive, negative, or somewhere in between? It's stressful, full stop. I don't think the, the, the joy that a parent may experience if their child does well can adequately compensate for the months of anxiety and, and long, long, long hours with lessons and homework and the distress on the child. I don't think there's any compensation for it. Um, and I never have it, even dating back to my own experience of common entrance. It was the same thing. I did very well. I got what was, you know, everybody's coveting this first choice. Yeah. I got my first choice, but in reflecting on the entire experience, it, it, it does not add up. The amount of anxiety and stress heaped on these little kids and their parents, it is in no way balanced off by, and this is just the kids who are successful. What about the ones who are not? Right. Yeah, you know, uh, just just a quick touch on that last point before you, you, you join in there, because I don't want things to get lost. Um, Daryl, you know, I came out of lower mover government primary school. Um, that year was my cousin, Ricardo. He went to QRC. Um, there was Anthony Rosales. He went to St. George's. Russell Batiste went to St. George's. I think Roberto went... I can't remember where Roberto went. Um, Roger Williams went um, Holy Cross because he has migrated. <laughs> he was leaving okay. Mova and he went up in the East. Um, <laughs> and I, I, yeah, and some of the girls, they did well as well. We had a couple of bishops. We had uh, a couple of St. George's, St. George's um, mm -hmm. girls. And um, one person, I think, went Holy Name. Mm -hmm. So uh, you remember this thing in detail. Wow. Yeah, because you know, I had to I had to flick back the memory, you know, you know? and um, 
we had a good bunch of kids in our class. Uh, but the first day in St. Mary's, I had this big duffel bag, a big gym bag. It was cut in my shoulder. And I walk in there. It's a 20-minute walk from, from a, the, the, the taxi stand up mm -hmm. to St. Mary's. And I was like sweating like a hog. And my first period was a guy called Jamshid Murray. Ali. Jamshid, not Jamshid, um, Jessel Murray from right. Math. Jessel Murray was a terrorist. And I went from having full marks in math <laughs> in the space of one, maybe two weeks, mm -hmm. totally turned off a of math for the rest of my St. Mary's college career. I talk about turned off. The only thing that saved me was my dad ended up getting lessons for me in form four. <laughs> that saved me right. because trust me, when you get turned off from something, it, it's a complete switch. But the yeah. problem with me was I felt when I went in Saints, I felt like if I was the boss, <laughs> you know, I coming out to say, I, 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 I alone. Yeah. So I was well, like, yeah, pull yeah. like a shot, you know what I mean? Yeah, Only yeah. to realize, wait a minute, I know what, 1B? What's that mean? I'm not one of the brightest kids in this school? What? And I see in this, and then this terrorist is just on my back. Hmm. I'm talking about it took maybe two weeks for me to shut completely off. Mm -hmm. My experience at coming, the making the transition is really what I'm talking about here. So it's not so much that common entrance was a disaster or getting yeah. into St. Mary's was a disaster. It's just that transition for me mm -hmm. really there. Yeah, yeah. The system failed me completely and it took me a long while to catch back up. And I saw pretty much the same thing with my two so my my elder two sons who were in St. Mary's um, a year apart, they were, they were a year apart. They would have just graduated a little while ago had they finished completely, both of them. But anyhow, that yeah. was my thing. And I realized that the system, it works for some people, but for a lot more people, it's a complete tragedy. So here I am trying to figure out if I could lend my voice to seeing some kind of change. Right, and we invite Maki to the conversation. Welcome, Maki. Feel free, we, you know, we flow in, feel free to jump in at any point. Okay, so what's striking me is that you all are talking about the system failing, but mentioning all the schools that we associate with success. I've only heard about denominational schools. And I think that is something to explore, that even for the children that have that ability to do exams well and have that ability to perform at a high level academically, even mm -hmm. for them, there are failings. Can we distill what the challenges are in that SEA process, that, that intense year or two years of preparation? How exactly are we failing children regardless of ability um, or, or capacity? Well, um, let, let me just state why exactly I am so against it, because I, I have some reasons which I think uh, I need to put up, need to throw up there, all right? And I'll give you three. The first of the three is that if you look around, and when I say, when I say around, I mean around the planet, you'll realize that more countries enforce an 11 plus exam on their kids. Enforce. There are some countries... Right that have, it's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You can, a parent can decide they want their child to take it. I'm thinking about the UK in particular. But a lot of the, I have to be careful how I say developed countries now because some of these developed countries really not turning up during this pandemic. But anyway, there are <laughs> reasons why, and if you check the research and look at the history, you will see the reasons why they scrapped the 11 plus exam. And invariably, what you will find is that it is always some version of this was not healthy for our population. Some mm -hmm. version or some variant of that. All right. So it's been done elsewhere and it's been scrapped. Okay. As I said before, it's not being done anywhere else. 
thirdly, the SEA or common entrance is one of the only unifying experiences that every Trinbagonian citizen has to undergo. Everyone. If you're looking from a societal perspective and from a sociological perspective, common experiences have some influence over the way a society runs, the way it turns out. Right. We are not a research-based people, so we don't do that kind of thing regularly. But I would right. love for somebody to fund a properly funded research project to look at the impact of the SEA experience and the exam on people 20, 30, even 40 years hence, and bring it right back to the present crop of people. When we look around and try to figure out why our society has some of the problems it has and why there, there are these divides between haves and have nots and why some people believe that they're destined for goodness and some people think that they're destined to struggle for the rest of their life, I would really love to see what, if any, and I'm saying if any, kind of tongue in cheek, the whole 11 plus experience has at a societal level. So, uh, and that's quite aside from my own stress as a parent and the stress that any other parent or child experiences, all right? So, you know, we, we, we've gone along for too long just saying it's too hard to, to replace it and it's too difficult. Since when was too difficult a reason not to do something? <laughs> if right. something but should not... be done, it needs to be done. You put the work in to make it happen, but you don't ever sit back and say, well, it's so hard, I'm not going to do it. N nothing progresses by doing things that way, you know? So... I, you know, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty secure in my position where the whole thing is concerned. It's, there is nowhere on this planet that, aside from maybe Trinidad and the Caribbean, perhaps, oh. that, has, that feels that this is the best way of streaming or dealing with our children's um, education. I don't buy it. Right. Well, you know what the knee-jerk reaction is? When you take the alternative approach, which is to zone, to say you just go to the school in your area, you immediately deny an opportunity for a talented, a promising, a gifted student to have access to the best schools strictly by dint of where they're living. So what is the response to that? What is the response to the fact that as flawed as it is, people see opportunity in this system and they can't imagine how else it could work how can we access this opportunity otherwise let me Go just jump in here quick yeah. Yeah. um how do we quantify the best schools historically by the campus by by the exam results what is the by the discipline, by the by the school record at, at sports. All of the above. Right now, right now, if we measure, let's use the word, let's use the school again, St. Mary's College. Both Daryl and I are products of that school. He will tell you right now, the saints of the 80s and the saints of today is two different things completely. <laughs> The plant itself. Isn't that what campus. all? Isn't that what all older people say? But this yeah, but is I where I'm going to come just from now. It. I think some people just saying it, and I, we actually we really mean it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the plant itself, the campus itself, it's deteriorating bad, bad, bad. It is an old school. It's 157 years old, and there are parts of that school that show every day of having boys running up and down in their 460 or most years. Um, but there are, of course, spots where you, 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 you feel like when you go into school, you're not going to get chopped, shoot, murder. You feel like that in some other schools. <laughs> I don't want to call names. That doesn't exist in St. Mary's. Okay, great. There's a wonderful environment. When you go next door in, in, in St. Joseph's convent, you feel like, you're in some oasis of peace and calm. You don't hear these young women screaming and carrying on. It, yes, okay, so there are high points. But look at the exam results of a brand new school in East. Um, Bishop East Bishop and East, yeah. Trinity East. Brand new. You know, the paint hardly dry on that school compared to some of the, 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 the monoliths we're talking about here right now. Mm -hmm. When you look at the results, they're doing better than almost all of the Port of Spain boys' schools put together, right? When you look at a school like uh, some of these, the, the, the South schools, where when we were 
in, if you want to call it, when we were school age, you wasn't even, I didn't even know about poverty girls. I didn't even know about that. <laughs> but now you're starting to see that application of things that would have been the systems that would have made a St. Mary's College in the 80s and before a, a so-called prestige school. You apply those systems and now what you're starting to see is more schools are picking up. You're seeing more school um, alumni, more school alumni participation, better fundraising. You're seeing everybody have a, a, a fit with the science business model where they could do an annual event and raise funds to build plant, uh, supply their labs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what is happening more and more and more, what you're starting to see is the, the students who want to get in these so-called prestige schools, they're going to uh, international school, they're going to Maple Leaf, they're going to, to British Academy. And if you look at those schools, they have nothing that's so special. It's brick and mortar and hardworking teachers, which is something that we're going to get to and we're going to spend a lot of time on. The teachers make the difference. The administration makes the difference. Right now, St. Mary's College is run, they're, they're think about almost 80 uh, teachers and staff, more than half of them are women. No disrespect to the gender equity here. Sedrian, I know you are a serious um, a gender equity uh, fighter, warrior, and enough respect, you're on my team from day one, but I will say this, it's very difficult for women, for our staff with half of them, a faculty is half of women, to teach some of these children. Some of these children, hmm, anyhow, it differ, it's difficult. So when it I is, start is, to look yeah, at, when I start to look at government secondary schools, where is the vast majority are women, I'd be like, are these fellas in science? It's science, <laughs> it's literally science compared to some of the Gunters in other schools. I worry about some of these female teachers. I worry about it, right? Literally, how are they coping? So I know there is a, a, a draw, a big part of the, the arguments that I saw on the post was what we going, everybody go and fight to get into these so-called prestige schools. That's not the case. That's not the case. The people who would have made those schools prestige back in the day, them going somewhere else, they're spending their money somewhere else. It's $35,000 a year to get into the international school something like $20,000 a year to get in into um, British Academy. The government funding is, is less than $2,000 per student in St. Mary's College. Let's get real here. Let's break this thing down. Daryl, over to you there. Oh, by the way, I yeah, just want to say hello, Renee. Renee, is in. Renee just came. And Sonia, <laughs> we welcome Sonia to the conversation. Sonia, at any point, feel free to jump in. Okay. Yeah. Um... That school you, you call uh, Bishop's East. Bishop's East, am I correct? Yeah, Bishop's East. And Trinity. Yeah. Right, Bishop's okay, and Trinity. Trinity. Yeah. Bishop and Trinity, okay. Somebody needs to be stripping apart exactly what they have done from day one, analyzing it and understanding it in detail to be able to replicate it anywhere else. But again, we, these are they're, they're, the, they're, again, they're, these are the denominational schools, though, bringing uh -huh. with it a tradition from, you know, the, the management from the Anglican board. They have an existing framework that they've been able to apply and deploy successfully. Let's talk in the context of the government schools that we're suggesting mm -hmm. have the capacity. QRC is a government school. QRC is so a government why, school. What Say my point is, is a this. government school. That my is point so. is this. If I can build a structure here, why can't I go a few meters to my left and build the same structure over there once I understand what I need to put in place, what, I need, what processes I need to follow, what steps I need to take? Right. There is a reason why some schools get the kind of results you're looking for and why other schools don't. It's not magic. And it's not just hocus pocus left up to the, the fates. There are things that you do and if we have schools that have a consistent, that are consistently underperforming, there are reasons why that happens as well. And we need to stop pretending as though they have prestige schools and, it, and have other schools that are not prestige, and that's how it is. 
to question. It's not how it is. That's we, how we have allowed it to continue. Do we have to do that work in terms of increasing standards across the board before we can talk about phasing out the exam and having... Yeah. So, so that means not 2020 then? In my opinion, no. yes, because... Uh, sorry, in my opinion, yes, because I wouldn't want... We still have a system in place and, you know, just changing around the means of transitioning the students from one place to another overnight will not necessarily, you know, um, result in an equal, uh, appropriate experience for everyone. So it needs to be happening. That needs to be happening at the same time. So yeah, but Daryl, just, just, just to cut across you here quickly, mm -hmm. it's not happening now. There's no equity in this system, even for, if, even for kids who sit along next to each other in St. Mary's. Remember Daryl Hernandez, our classmate? Yeah. He used to be driving from, um, from Blanche's shares. <laughs> yeah, boy. There were times, I mean, I didn't know Daryl personally because, you know, I was mm. kind of singular focus on basketball mm. after form four, right? Mm. Everybody kind of know that. But, like, I used to be to school real late, six o'clock. I still sweating, I still bouncing, boy, still shooting basketball. And I would see Daryl there and I'd be like, hey, what, 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 what going on with you? Like, I'm a sleep bus boy. And, and, and that meant he went to sleep in school. Yeah. And that was like a, that was like a one-off, maybe once or twice for the term. I was like, maybe sometimes twice a week. Clint Campbell in Form 1, Clint Campbell had the same backpack, a big, 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 big. And he digs it out. He lives in Chaguanas. He going down the road on an mm. afternoon to make sure he catch that bus. Because if he didn't catch that first bus out of Dodge, it's hours he's stuck in a line. You can't okay, study but, in the line. You're standing up in the line. But, Tay, hey, obviously, this was mm. getting an education from this particular school was deemed by their families to be so much, so important and so superior so to what they could access in their own communities that they decided those sacrifices were worth it. What I'm saying is, at this point, nothing has changed to make the average person sitting down in every community in Trinidad feel, okay, the school in my community is going to be able to perform at the same level as these so-called prestige, so-called best schools. So how do we order the transition? What has to come first? Darrell, you taking a yeah. shot at this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I yeah, mean, obviously, you know, everything, every journey starts off with a first step, but you have to know where you're going. I'm not hearing anybody in any position of authority saying that they want to get rid of the SEA exam. Right. So there's no will to do it at this point in time. I think we have to begin, first of all, with a will. And from there, you'll be able to roadmap, well, okay, what exactly is required? And we can use the, the, the same schools that we were talking about there the ones that are doing quite well that have come up recently, we can use them as a sort of a, a template, let's say. Um, from that, you can determine how long you think it would take for this to happen, and you can begin setting dates and begin putting plans step by step in place to make it actually happen. But the first key thing that is really missing right now is the will to do it. Years ago, I heard some, I can't remember who it was, but I just know it was people in positions of authority, could have ministers or so forth, talking about phasing it out over time. And I don't know where that conversation went. Like it disappeared and resurfaced here today in this forum. But nobody is talking about it. So if there's no will to even try to start doing it, you know, we're stuck. So the we have to, quest, no, yeah, yeah. The question of what is prestige, what is not prestige. Look at Tobago, right? Tobago has one so-called prestige school, Bishop's High mm -hmm. School, Tobago. All the rest are basically government school or state subsidized schools. So yes, you have Pentecostal, Light and Life. There's um, Harmons, um, which is a, a SDA like um, school. But yeah. the vast majority of students in Tobago, the vast majority are going to be, if you want to call it, zoned and placed in a government secondary school. Mm -hmm. They don't have um, children stabbing up each other. Although, mm -hmm. but last year there was this fight that went viral on a. Uh, on, on Instagram, and it was a problem. Um, the father had to come in and step in, and I got enough applause. Nobody in there, no handbrake or anything. If it was me, it would have been a different story, you know? But what is, this, what is the case here? 
are we saying that we are happy that only a certain amount of schools in Trinidad are prestige? And where's the rest? What, what are the rest of these? The, so why are we setting the bar low for the rest of these schools? That's ridiculous. It that is, is ridiculous. It and is. for the children who, if you, could you imagine for a second, you as a child, all right, Cedrian, you did well in SE. Um, what was it, common entrance? No, nah, you're SEA child. No, <laughs> Darryl, it, you did well in it common entrance. It was common entrance. It was common entrance. It was common entrance. Hey. Cedrian, you common entrance. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> So Cedrian, you did well. Daryl, you did well. I did well. I don't know about the two other members on this chat so far, but let me put this question to you. What if you didn't? How would you have felt? You have felt like, what if you were that kid, you know, fighting up, trying to get a 70, your, your, your last practice test, your, your boss at 80, and then you say, aha, get him. And then you come in in this common entrance or SEA exam, and you, you, and you, you freeze. Panic hits you. Your, your, your performance anxiety hit you, everything hit you, and then boom, your rail crash and you drop a little 70 or something. You out of the picture, right? You are now going to be zoned in another school where is your, your classmates are 50, some of them 45, 45, some of them do five, right? And those are the good ones, over 10%. And we didn't really talk about data because we know how hard data is in Trinidad. But as a PTA yeah. president, um, having that conversation with the principal at my school, I was privy to some of the passes, pass rates in, uh, mm -hmm. what was that zone? Port of Spain and Environs um, East. Anyhow, um, there were two region, East regions in, in, in Port of Spain and Environs. Anyhow, so when we looked at some of the data, vast majority of children coming out of this thing are in the 50 zone, 50 math, 50 English, and, and five at the time, I'm not sure was the structure of the exam right now, but there was uh, 20 marks coming from the creative writing component. They were getting five. And in my mind, I'm like, what child gets five? 50% in English means you're barely literate in the language. We're not a bilingual country. We only have one language in Trinidad. So you mean, that means if you score an under 50, you are barely literate. Let's get real. If you cannot get, if you can't get quarter of the marks in a written essay, that means you're barely literate. It is not about whether the exam, this or the stress or that, 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 that. Come on. So this is the, this, this is the, the, the situation here. We are dumping children into schools. Children that will never catch their stuff, their, 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 their strength. We are dumping children into schools where the, the youngest of the, 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 the age bracket in that school, remember some of the schools have children who are 21 years old, mm -hmm. right? You're dumping a 12-year-old into a school. Most of the government schools are also bigger. So you're talking about maybe a thousand children in a school. You dump in a hundred and something, 12 year olds into an environment where there are unmotivated academic students and all kind of all kind of racket for them to get into. Slackness, crime, and pure idleness. And that is the vast majority of the school. So in my mind, it's not a question of what do we do about the, 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 the prestige schools? Cream always rises to the top. My question is what are we doing about the government schools that we seem to have accepted as just mediocre and worse? That's my problem. Yeah, you know, there are government school success stories, lots of them. Can you pinpoint for me what works? What does it take in order for people to be able to thrive in environments that we consider to be suboptimal? Yeah, I don't know. Let me tell you something. I don't like to talk anything I don't know. So if I say something, it's because I'd show on it and I could defend it. All right. Now, I don't have any detailed knowledge about what works, but I am aware of a few things from experience. And that would include professional experience dealing with people. Eh? The importance of family 
and support, and by family, I don't necessarily mean blooder, but I mean people in support of that child, encouraging them, motivating them, giving them targets to aim at. The importance of that kind of support cannot be understated. Right. I can scarcely think of an example of someone who, let's say, didn't do that well at SCA age, but did well overall, that did not afterwards say if it were not for my family etc 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 or if it were not for my father my aunt my uncle grandmother whoever it is all right so i know that having a strong parents or parental figures having a strong interest in the child's welfare and being involved with them at every step of the way very hands-on being very positive and encouraging them that is one of the elements associated with success at the sea level and beyond and that opens up a whole set of questions by itself there, right? Because we, we know not everybody, not every child is in that situation. And an even bigger question should me, a child has to have that kind of support to be successful what is of the school or the community in I, that instance. You know I'm now going to like ask you, Daryl, mm -hmm. what are we sending these children to school for? If it's going to be, if, if the highest motivated academic performances fall back on the parents, the success of those children happens in spite of the system, not in because of, of the system. In spite right? of. So my, my, my thing here is this, right? And again, I could use an example here. I remember when I was in standard four, my dad came up, my, my mom and my dad weren't uh, married. They, they lived in separate houses. Mm -hmm. My dad came up, my dad was really good at math. My dad came up at night to give me some, um, some term, some lessons. I was intimidated. I, my, I used to get scared, shaking, and pee myself. Like I was reciting six, um, six times tables, mm -hmm. and I got stuck on six sixes. Um, and it was like seven sixes or what? Seven sixes or what? No, my dad had this math book about this big, about six seven inches. I get one of that in the back of my head. Seven sixes or what? Wow! And that was the end of that. So. In terms of that parenting situation you're talking about, it, mm -hmm. my mother had a system that got our, uh, all her kids into schools and doing well. My dad was very standoffish when it comes to wasting his time. So there was a mix of that. Me, I just wanted to do well in school. So there are a lot of self-motivated children who are doing well as well. Yes. Maybe they mightn't be the ones the 15 or so who will get interviewed in the newspaper. But there are a hell of a lot of self-motivated children who see their environment and say, you know, I'm getting out of here. I'm taking myself out of here. But that's not who we worried about. I'm not worried about a self-motivated kid. I'm not worried about a, 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 a child who's living in a, a family with two high-earning um, parents who are fully invested in their future. I'm worried about that child who is one of several children who are, who are in a home with bad lighting, poor structure, full, too small, cramped, children, older children who already failed in the system, who thinks the system is a joke, and they just mm -hmm. don't have the kind of support coming from anywhere, and whose parents have low aspirational um, qualities in their life. So you yeah. can't say, I want to be like my dad, or I want to be like yeah. my mom. You know, yeah. that child is them I worry about. Yeah. And, and we have lots of those. More, 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 mm -hmm. more, more, more by far. Mm -hmm. 18,000 mm -hmm. children every year, on average, mm -hmm. take SEA. I'm not worried about the top 1% or 10%. Mm -mm, can't be. I'm worried about the bottom 10% that can't read, can't write, don't know how to spell the name. Right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call Morel good two or three partners from my primary school, but it had fellas just like that. Right? One guy, I'll use his first name, Marlon. Marlon went through a SE, arm um, coming out just like this. Marlon finished coming with the whole test in more minutes. He guessed the whole thing. Needless to say, he did not pass. But you know what? Around the middle of, and he got into um, move a lav until on a late mm -hmm. call. Remember late calls? Yeah, URL, late call is, URL calling. Late call people. is somebody. 
somebody yeah, space would wrap up in gab line. Him, I said Marlon. <laughs> it had about five any Marlon. Any it had about five Marlon in my school, in my class, actually. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> he died, though, actually, strangely enough. About form three, he was, he, 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 he died. Criminal activities. It was sad. It was a sad case. Uh, let me read a comment from Mackie. She said, I am a common entrance child, passed for success, love until composite, and cried. I remember the day well. She went from winning spelling bees, poetry, school contests, and always being a top student to passing for success, love until, and to her at the time, she felt it was devastating. Um, so, Maki, I mean, at any point, feel free to jump in to, to talk, um, to give your perspective on how that experience affected you and how you overcame it because I feel as though we set children up to have to get over that thought that I somehow failed or fell short before they could go on with their secondary careers and, and, and launch into adulthood. Next point she's raising, isn't it much more difficult for parents to take a more active role because they are working longer hours and both parents are working now so um, therefore, kids are often left at work centers. So, y'all feel free, feel free to jump in there, because we're talking you know, about yeah, we, we're talking about the, the role that parents play, the role that communities play. But isn't it kind of harder to do that now, given all the demands? Yeah, you know, back in the day, and I have quite a few friends who went success, and they. They definitely thriving. They they moving forward in life. They're very go getters. Um, right now, the the system inside there, I think it's it's really being led by a uh, an administration that has taken a a real good grip on um, discipline and accountability yeah. for both the staff and the students. And you know you don't really hear about success in the papers, and things, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's a reason for that structure. Um, when I look back at my children, my, my two elder children, their entry in St. Mary's and their subsequent career as St. Mary's College student, I see a big, if you want to call it, like a, a curve. <laughs> the first day Tay was like, wow, dad. I have the best uniform in the world. Because, you know, he had a little tie and, and long sleeve. He looked real sharp and everything. And he was like, by, start, by form three, he didn't even want to wear the dress uniform. All right? So there, there is, even when you get into a school like that, there are still issues that are created. Now, it's not like a school like Southeast Port of Spain when you walk into school is a life risk where you could get shoot, you know. Um, you could be in the middle of a shootout with police and gangs. It's not like that. But you have issues that probably people just don't want to accept that. You're thinking, well, you're in a good school. What's the problem? You know? I don't know. Uh, See, Sonia, up. Sonia is asking, yeah. Sonia is saying the issue is bigger than what we're discussing here so far. And the fundamental question is, what do we want for our citizens? What do we want for our citizens? For me to answer from my perspective as a parent, for the year that my son prepared for SEA, it was like, put a stop to art class, put a stop to extracurriculars because it was just this right. intense, all-consuming preparation. And I felt like, on the one hand, this is what you have to do in order to compete to get into this prized school, which he did. But it was so sad that it came at the sacrifice of developing talents, um, exploring passions. And to me, when I think about what do we want for citizens, what do I want for my child, it's for them to maximize their potential it's for them to be best at them at being themselves instead of forcing yourself into this square because uh, that's what you do because this is what supposedly gives you the best life prospects the best chances 
So let me throw that out to the panel. And Maki, Sonia, feel free to unmute and jump in at any point. What do we want for our citizens? Could, could I add to what you just said? Yes. And Daryl, my colleagues, how dare you not recognize me? How dare you? <laughs> I know, I know, it's true. I know, I I'm not as made up and so on, I know, but How you doing? How you doing? I felt this discussion was important. <laughs> Thanks for joining in, man. I no. you say something, no, I, I'll say something after. But. Yeah, so, so I, I, I like the position um, that Cedrian just made. I mean, I am a parent of four children. Three of who went through SEA, of course, went to the prestige schools. Um, and like Dennis, my concern is not for my children. They would get by anyway. This is how I see it. Almost, and they will get by. I am not worried in the least about my children. You know, even if they have a failing grade, guess what? They will be okay, right? I am really concerned, really, about if. When I, I said that the issues are at the citizen level, because if we as a vision, as a country, and we, we the people need to demand it, say this is what we want at the citizen level. We want this greatest this level of decency for our people. We want them to be able to participate actively. I mean, once we've defined some of those things, then hopefully it will trigger certain um, plan strategies and plans to make that happen. So this whole conversation is about COVID. So we start thinking, what's the opportunities for COVID? So what did COVID show? There's the use of technology, right? What is it, if you say the issue in some of these schools are teachers, what is stopping us using the technology to have master classes? What is stopping us from, from exposing the children who are not normally exposed to different things. We have the technology and many of these new schools that are being built. If you see some of these facilities, not all, eh? but some of the some new of ones. Nice. Some of them are amazing. I walk in it, I'm like, I wish I had this when I went bishops. I'm just saying, right? So, I mean, so you do have those, those opportunities. I consider them opportunities for us to use, even if you say, let's do a sandbox or some kind of pilot what is required and let's start revisiting what we call education right if i have somebody who real good at doing social media and videos and so on let's 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 clap them for that let's support them let but again it comes back to we see as our necessary for our citizens so on the other hand, you still have people talking about this and that and and who is from the west and who from on but my children are Wesley College, was born, and I still from Belmont, right? So I still have that 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 view. But that until we start getting to that crux and having those discussions, it's not about I don't even know if it's SCA, but what is the form that education could will take and what really constitutes education? And that is the discussion I think we should be having. Just my little two cents. Love y'all. Okay, so that that's my two cents to not to be a shilling there. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for weighing in. And now, you know, we all know what we want for our children and for all of the children in our countries. But there is this tension, there's this pressure that's brought to bear when you're nearing that stage where it's like, you know what? I wish I could just let my son do what he wants to do, do art, you know, keep going to football practice. But the thought of him passing for a quote unquote bad school is enough for us to kind of just suppress all of those concerns. And I'm, I'm speaking on my behalf, I'm speaking on behalf of all, all my friends who are in my generation and who are now going through that process is like, we know it's terrible, you know, we know it's terrible, but what is the alternative? And I want to get from yeah. you all some ideas. Let, let, all right, just now. Let uh, me say, I have, to, I have to jump in before you go. You can. Hold it on, hold it on, hold it on, hold it on. I have, oh, to, one have, I have to. A question, Sergeant, you asked a question about five minutes ago. I'll paraphrase the question. The question was something along the lines of what do we want? Right? We, our citizens, not just on. children, our, our citizens, citizens, right? Citizens. Well, I'll, I'll take it bigger. I'll take our society. What do we want, all right? Fortunately, because of 
uh, being involved in a very diverse range of um, communities and activities. I will let you all know, I am a member and I've been a playing member of Massey Trinidad All-Star since 1989. Big side. That's a big side. I've held the position, position of <laughs> I've held the position of assistant leader of the band for four years. I've held the position of PRO for four years as well. And I've been involved at every level within the community, within the, the organization. Uh, many people in our country, and I'm not just speaking for people involved in PAN, whose gift has little to do with math and English, the way we enforce. We are telling some of our brightest, some of our most gifted citizens, and again, I'm not talking about math and English and science, but our brightest and most gifted persons, you are not worth as much as some other person, some other kid who excels at maths and science and, and, and English and so forth. And that's wrong. It's wrong primarily because we're not recognizing and harnessing the actual potential and the actual skill base and skill set that we have. There are some kids who are going to be good at the at academic stuff. There are some kids who are going to turn out to be surgeons and doctors and lawyers and, and whatever else, right? But there are also skilled sports people. There are also skilled musicians. There are skilled artists. And why do we keep acting as though their skill and their gift is somehow less valuable than the person who is good at economics or finance or something else? Maybe the systems that we have and that we keep holding on to keep Correct. reinforcing that untruth. All right? But I could tell you from kids who could stand up behind a pan and make that thing talk, <laughs> right? Word. They, are, they My blow niece. me away continually. They blow. If it's, let me tell you, if it's one thing I love about a panyard, when you see you go in there, it don't matter what your skill or what your, how much passes you have, where you come from, what's your job, you know. You can play the tune. Either you can play or you can't play. That's yes. the only exactly. thing that matters. It's so like a basketball equalizer. court like that. <laughs> right. It's an equalizer. Right? It's either you and can ball that, or you can't ball. That's what's exactly. up. Exactly. And in that process of equalizing, you get to open your eyes open. If they're not open already and you realize, but wait. We have a bunch of people with just this raw energy and this raw talent inside here. And we just keeping it down all the time because they don't fit into our box that we inherited from somebody else and continue to hold on to. So what are we really preparing? Oh, I mean, the SE is just part of the whole thing. But what yeah. are we really preparing right. our kids for? We just quick prepare to try to fit them and, and into two, other boxes that they may not fit in. That, come on. Go two, ahead. two quick points that I want to tag on to what Daryl and um, Sanjay just said. Very importantly, we have this idea of we want to create this wonderful rainbow nation. We want to push it forward, rainbow nation 2.0 into the future. The fact is, most prestige schools, yeah, you might do well at the academic side of the subjects, but you're doing horribly wrong or you have absolutely no in, uh, inputs. Let me use a quick example. Engineering students. You're doing your physics, you're doing your math, add math, and you're bossing them up. Your first day in UE, you don't even know what a lathe is. You never see a file. You barely know how to turn a screwdriver. How are you going to create anything at all? We're teaching children about how to use a computer. For the first three years, it's basically electronic document preparation, right? So here you again, a laptop, Wonderful, but what are you using a laptop for? To, you, to learn how to use Microsoft Word? You can learn how to use Microsoft Word in two hours of watching YouTube videos. You don't need to spend three years on that, All right? And if you ain't pick it up, then maybe it's not for you, All right? The point is this, we're trying to create captains of industry, captains and female uh, entrepreneurship is a big, big growth um sector that they, they internationally we want to see more of we want to see more women in management and directorship of creative industries we want to see more female points of view we want to see more all-inclusive points of view but we want to see more trainees making stuff right we have a uh, 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 um chambers of commerce from all kinds every corner it have a chamber of commerce Every turn around, your, every little village, every little thing is, what are these people doing? They're merchants. 
They buy and they sell. When last we see a Chamber of Commerce award somebody who makes something out of scratch? Coding. When last we hear about people getting some, um, some startup funding, two and a half million US to start up a, a, a tech company? We don't hear about that because we're not teaching our children that. So if we're not teaching that, what are we really teaching? So it's not even about whether, um, and I'm seeing someone just hand up, uh, it's not even about whether the SEA or the school system, the, the planning. Second, second um, year in school, Minite, his class teacher, they had a meeting. He said something that stuck with me. These children here are the people who are going to pay my pension. That is why I teach them, teaching them good. That is why I, I, I run in my blood to water to teach these children, because that is who is going to be paying our pension. These are the people who are going to be propping up the economy in 20 years. Think about that. Think about 100 children that you know. If you don't know 100, think about 10. Which one of them 10 you want um, operating on your knee, replacing your hip? Right? Fixing your, your, your million dollar Koenigsegg. Which one of them children you want to do that? We in a mess. The system has failed us a long time ago. We're propping up a system, like Daryl said, that is basically a, a, a vestige of a, a bygone era, something that we inherited from people who didn't like us in the first place. In the first place. And still and probably still don't. Right? Sonia, let's give Sonia a chance to jump in here. Jump in right there, Sonia. Sanja. Is it me or Maki has her hand up? It's you, I see. You. Oh, I have my hand up, or I didn't realize. <laughs> you guys your hand. Hand. Let me, but it's clearly, your... clearly a common entrance student. Clearly a past common entrance student. Um, <laughs> no, but no, and guys, I, I, I really, and I want to speak a little bit to Sadrian, but Daryl, first of all, you're spot on. I mean, I have done work as well with people in, in, in areas from up up in the back of East Port of Spain and so on, you know, through chess and, and through whatever else that I'm involved in. And you're right, and you look at these children, and that's when you realize they, 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 their journey is not going to be my journey. And that's okay, right? Yeah, they're brilliant. Um, when, they're brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and that's okay. And, and, and you see, and I'm going to speak to Sergio, and as I said, her mother with four children, as I always tell them, as I always stress on the four, and Daryl know because both of us have four children the same ages, right? <laughs> Yeah. The, the, I didn't make it an issue for my children. My children still play their sports. They still play their chess. They did everything because I refused to subscribe to what the school said because I know my children will be okay because they came from a stable home. They have, they have good self-esteem. They don't have to worry about anything. So I genes. know the most, <laughs> yes. So I had faith in my family and what I built. And I said, there were days I told my daughter, girlfriend, take a day off, you know. She was in a SA class. I said, not today. Not right. today. Because I was paying attention when I realized that they have these exams one after the other. I said, no. And I told the principal, I said, here, now some days you won't see her. You understand? <laughs> some day, and, and because I realized that even though when we did it, it was complete, we didn't have that pressure. No. We didn't have that pressure. So now no. we have to tell our aware. children yeah. it's okay. We have to be the ones, not the children. We have to be the ones. Mm -hmm. And, and to show to be... that and all of them passed well and all of them did supremely well. So, to I mean, be, no, some of brutally honest, can some though, them do better. Yeah. Go ahead. To, to Sorry. be brutally honest, though, I'm not worried about your kids either. I'm not worried about Daryl's kids. I'm not worried about uh, Sejian's son. I'm not. Because you guys have set a standard. Your children have already established themselves. You know what I mean? I know Sonja, uh, son and daughter, before I realized, oh, shit, that's her. Oh, that's yes. your child. Oh, Lord. You understand? Because I'm a sports fan. So I'm seeing these children's names in the papers, right? So, like, um, another, another one of my classmates, Dominic Chateau, I, I, I see in his children yes. doing well, well, yeah. swimming up and down the place and doing really well. And then, I re it's then afterwards, I put, so I'm not worried about these children. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about the kids who's struggling. 
I'm worried about the kids who are unmotivated. I'm worried about the kids who are watching the system and saying, you know what? I ain't going to be no clown. I ain't going to be going to try and boss my brains and get a job and then, uh, sorry, get education and then go to university and get a degree and then come out and then still have to kiss somebody till to get a walk. I don't know somebody. I had to call Uncle Dennis to see what we could do, boy. No, no, no. It's them I worry about. I don't worry about your children. Eh? You know what I mean? At some point in time in my life, I want to pump your child gas. That's what I think. Yeah. We want to be pumping such a child gas. We've established a few things. That's what I worry about. Damn even, children. So we've established a few things. Even for the children that have come from secure households, motivated parents, <laughs> Even for them, it is not a constructive exercise. That preparation to go into secondary school and then even there, there are some challenges. And then, as you're pointing out, even more so for those who don't have that very strong support system, there's a crisis. So the question at this point is, when we look at the SEA, at SEA reform, what can we do? What are the ideas? What are the scenarios of how we can alter that experience from primary school into secondary school? And is there something feasibly that we could do this year, given the challenges that COVID-19 has presented us with? Or is this something, as Daryl said, that is going to have to take a far longer time, more planning, more strategizing? I want to stick a pin at the end of that. Mm -hmm. Is anything we knew we do different going to be any worse than it is right now? I don't think it's even possible to be worse than it is right now. That's, <laughs> I, I've that's learned what not I'm to saying. ask those kinds of questions. Huh? <laughs> so, 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 okay. So, yeah, we're saying, I am saying that now is the mm. perfect time for a reset of the system. Mm. A lot of what we said is that there are children, regardless of whatever system, they're going to succeed. What I am also saying is that there are the vast majority of these children are not going to succeed. And they're going to leave SEA thinking they're failures. And that does not change because the system they're going to get in into, into most government secondary schools are just exactly, them. they're just going to confirm that, hey, you're really boss boy. You should have really put in that extra work in SEA. But you know what? They're never mm -hmm. going to take the accountability that... They're never going to say, this is me saying, I should have taken my own self-interest because they're not young and they're, they're not mature enough. They're too young and they're not mature enough to understand what that decision meant. So it is like what Daryl said very early in this, this conversation. Why are we putting this heavy, heavy, heavy thing on them? With zoning, right? When we put zoning in place, there's nothing that's stopping a, 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 a parallel system, which would be like what my dad and probably everyone else's, everyone else's parents would have done, the exhibition system. Nothing is wrong with that. Let the Concordat go scrap and say, hey, denominational schools, all you feel, all your best, go back out into the wild and prove it. No problem. Charge the same $30,000 as international school and charge $20,000 per student. Whoever want to go, go. And you know what? We will give you all a... Uh, um, some kind of stipend for children who want to go into there and still want to take a place. All right, give them an exam. All you write it to your own self, whatever you want to do, rig it for yourself. Okay, is your name Sabga Abood? 30 marks. Is your name Alan? Two marks. <laughs> you can have that as the test if you want. Whatever yeah. it is, it don't you're matter to you're me. You're all into names, T. Let them, let them go yeah, and do their own system. That is fine. Let the people who want to go and, and perpetuate the system, let them go. But for the rest of them, let's just get better. Let's model on the, 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 the successes of what is happening in Tobago with all the other government schools. Second, uh, Scarborough Secondary is not a bad school. Roxborough is not a bad school. Correct, right? correct. And there are, there are successes from those schools on many different levels, right? You have, you have students leaving the Tobago school system, excellent students, excellent athletes, going to scholarship and doing well abroad and coming back here with a degree. And most of them, most of us, they ain't coming back at all because they're getting jobs out there. 
right? So there are systems that we could say, hey, this is working here, this is working here, and this we need to scrap down. I don't see why we should spend 20, 25 million on a system that we know is flawed and we know is hurting too many of our children. That's where I'm at right now. So it could be anything. It could be pass around a big hat and let your end pull out a, 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 a piece of fold up paper and whichever one was the coal one, yeah, yeah they, them will go get you. That would be just as good because it's, it, we take, we roll in the dice with some of our children here. Back to you guys. Go ahead. <laughs> what, 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 what? I call some wrong names. Some say? people are like, whoa, huh? whoa. <laughs> Who's that? Like, I didn't, calling that names, boy. Yeah. Name. <laughs> nah. No, I'm serious, though. I'm serious, though. Yeah, no. Nah, um, you know, I, I, I go back to what I was saying in, in the beginning. You know, this experience of SEA has an impact on our society. And we try to analyze societal problems and societal issues in isolation as though they just happen now on the spot in 2020. And we fail to take into account what, experience, what common experiences like SEA may have on people. Telling a young impressionable mind at age 10, if you don't get your first choice in this exam or your second choice, is okay. But you're really a loser. You're really not top notch. And that's it for the rest of your life. Yeah. Whispering that message to an impressionable 10 or 11 year old is cruel. It, it is bordering on criminal. Psychological damage. Yeah, it's criminal. It's criminal to, to put a little child through that. I could tell you from personal experience, I got my first choice. And on the outside, it looked as though whatever result I got, I would have been content with because I worked hard. The reality is, if I did not get my first choice, I would have felt like a complete failure at age 11. I am right. telling you. I never expressed it out aloud. I never told my mother. I never told my father. But at age 11, I basically balanced my entire existence on a pencil point. <laughs> on a pencil point of being able to get my first choice. And that is me. Came from a supportive, um, a supportive family, a loving home you know, probably academically, all right, you know, well enough to do, much less for those who, not, who know that that is not going to be their fate. Other countries did this and got rid of it. And the reasons why they got rid of it are well documented. We are discussing this issue here in the context of Trinidad and Tobago, but this issue has been explored to its fullest extent in other places. And in the same way as we reference information, when we look into build a highway, or, or, or build a, or buy a, a, a ship to go between China and Tobago, or whatever. Research the damn thing now. It's been done before. <laughs> and people yeah, can identify data. what there the is issues are. Can identify, yeah, we can identify what the issues and problems and challenges are. And if after we do all of that, we still convince that we need to have this system in place and it's the best thing for us and it produces the best result and it puts the entire country, all the citizens, in the best frame of mind to do well and be productive. So be it. Let me go and drink our beer somewhere. <laughs> I, you know, we've, we've made the case for reform. Let me get some concrete, workable ideas for what could happen this year. We're in a position where the exam date long past, we're trying to scramble to figure out how do we figure out who goes where come September. How do we do that? How do we do that? Say you don't talk already. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I think Tay is more on Tay is more on with respect to this particular issue because I personally don't think we can do much between now and September. I do think I do think that the opportunity now is an opportunity for us to begin the work of planning because we realize that look, this SEA structure that we thought was so strong and so intact, one little invisible virus threw the whole damn thing off. We, we wasn't even sure if we could have it. We're still not sure. Exposes we figured we could, but we're still not sure, right? It exposes the fragility of the whole thing. So it is an opportunity for us to say collectively, do we want to continue to base our collective existence on this fragile structure or do we want to start exploring something else? But I don't think we could do much, and that is my personal feeling, and I could be wrong, right? But I don't feel we could do much in terms of, as you say, you know, placing students into schools and so on between no, now and September. I don't think it's enough time to do a proper job, but it is a good opportunity for us to say, 
we can't just continue doing this forever because it, it, it's so fragile. And, 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 and Daryl, you, you, I think you're spot on um, in saying that there's no concrete action that we could play, we, I think we could do because it would just be a plaster, right? Exactly. It, it would not, yeah. So it, it makes no sense looking at that because I think we've done that for too long. Right, every time something can happen, let's throw in a mini zone in something, let's throw in a change, it didn't work. I, I attended a, a, a webinar sometime, and the one takeaway I remembered from that webinar, they said, use this period to build your best team ever. To me, as simple as that concept sounded, it resonated for me that yeah. I started to already started to think, okay, what could I do for the chess association? What could I do? Because what you want is relevance. What you want is sustainability. And again, what you want for your citizens. So what I would charge is that the ministry and its stakeholders, this is where you get some of the best minds. What are we going to do? That is your next step. Who are the people, not the minister, Minister Garcia is on his way out, right? <laughs> Who are the people? We, I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? But he is, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> Obviously, he's on as well. Uncle Obviously Grandpa. He's on. Let's call him Uncle Grandpa. <laughs> yeah. So, and, I mean, I know I've met the guy. I mean, very personable, very friendly. Nothing wrong him, right? with him as a like, human. Yeah. Yeah. He is. Yes, yes. Yeah. But I, I think he still feels he's the, the tutor president from back Yes, in that's exactly. So, still he, in that he mode. has different hats. But anyway, what I want to say is that is what you do. That is what we lobby to do. Let's get this task force. Just like how they had the roadmap. Now it'd be interesting yeah. to see if the roadmap addresses that. I haven't got a chance to, to look at the first draft, but I, I don't want to preempt it. But that is where it starts because that is where the vision in this COVID-19, post-COVID, is where it begins. And even if they didn't do it, it's okay. It's not too late. Let's make the su suggestions. There's a website. Let's Put our suggestions there. These are the people that you need on this thing. Or this is the skill set. We may not know the people that we need to reform this. And this is the timeline we need to do it because it happened in 2021. Let's be honest. Because if you want to do it well, you need to plan well. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's, but you have to get the best people on board. Let's focus our efforts. That could be done within the next month or two. That is immediate. Right. And then you put in a timeline execution in terms of a framework and then execution that's how i see it thanks you know yeah and you know the, the funny thank thing you. about thank it you. is we are looking at right now contemplating spending money we don't have right a 20 25 million that we don't have to come to, to perpetuate a situation where teachers are not not respect to the hard working ones but are yeah. real bomb teachers in the system right and this is another situation here SEA is about English, math. The rest is about different parts of English and math. If you can't read, you don't understand grammar, you don't understand, if you don't have language skills, you're boss. You're Plain good talk. You can't do anything, right? We have mm -hmm. teachers in this primary school system who are only there because in their mind, they're like, you know what? I could make almost $10,000 a month with hmm, with three months holidays a year teaching primary school math and english sign me up for this you understand we have blind spots in the system right we have blind spots and the blind spots are teachers who are really not good at either math or english but they're good enough to get passes and the pass is good enough to get them into the teaching service so we have teachers who are the problem and there are more of those than we care to admit. We are putting into a system, we are putting money and our children into a system where we know the majority of them are not going to succeed. We are putting, and you know what? People were saying, yeah, but we tried zoning. No, no, no. We tried partial zoning. We tried a kind of experimental kind of, let me zone some of these. That ain't going to work. Yeah, without that ain't go work. with the institution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? The heights. Mm -hmm of academic achievement, entrepreneurial accomplishment took place in the period in Trinidad and Tobago after the mm -hmm. World War II up to about the 70s. By the time we got into school in the 80s and early 90s, 
when we were at the dregs of that system, by that point in time, I don't want to bash the union. There are good people in the union, right? But by this time, the, 20, the noughties, and today what we see is a union fighting for survival and a union that has gone out of any kind of logical sense, trying to put things Correct. in place for teachers Correct. that are it's just impractical. How could you sabotage Correct. and hijack a whole country so that your, 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 your you. members could eat a food? You're done eating a food. You're home eating a food. Cool yourself. This is not about you. This is an opportunity for Tutor and its membership. And I have to say it, the greedy members of Tutor, not all of them are greedy, but there is a, 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 a culture of greed. Let me get them. Let me dig out their eye. And this is not that. Tutor, your teachers, your members have students, your children in the same systems. Your, I already your, your children are next to my children. Your children sitting down next to my children. Why we have to pay you extra sauce? For, 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 for work that you're supposed to be doing. Everybody have this thing, you know. COVID is not something that we will say, all right, teachers are exempt. You know, go down a list somewhere up in heaven, ticking off now, nah, but he's a teacher, but he's here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, there's a teacher's child. She's safe too. No, it can't work so. So what we have to do, we have to look at the system and say, hey, this to work, this to work, this to work. Let me stop it. That's where I am coming from, right? I also want to do two things. Um, a couple of people sent in a couple of points that they wanted to talk about. Um, one of the key points uh, I got, this is someone who is a teacher in a Port of Spain school. She's saying zoning prohibits exposure, exposure to expanded worldview, right? I also mm -hmm. saw that from, um, from, from Quint, um, Quint, Quint, Quinton Ross. Um, QD Ross, he's one of my um, people who were on the, the, the thread that started this whole conversation. He was saying that if he didn't get out of his tongue uh -huh. and got into QRC, he would have never, he would have, he would have fallen into that same life. And to a certain extent, I don't know if that would have, because I was very self-motivated. I don't know if that would have been the same for me, right? I, I would not mind staying in MOVA for the rest of my life. I wanted to do that. <laughs> I really want to see Mover rise up. But I do understand that there are people who want to get out of their situation and move yeah. it forward. So a big part of that education plays a big part in social, upward social mobility. I do respect that. And by putting children in this kind of guinea pig, kind of prototyping situation where we're now going to test out full zoning and we're scrapping, yes, it would be probably too much shocks too many shocks to the system at one point in time, but I don't know that I could feel comfortable with just perpetuating the same. We know how it's going to end. You feel me? So why don't we change it? Why don't we see? Well, we know why we're seeing. What was his name? Uncle, um, <laughs> Grandpa. Uncle Grandpa. Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Grandpa. Grandpa. We know Uncle Grandpa a little out of depth here. Right? We know that. But that is... There are people who can speak to education in Trinidad who would have access, who would have had access to the data. Where, where are they? Why aren't they speaking up? We're sacrificing another generation, another class, another 20,000 people, and, and spinning the dice and, and hoping that some of them get through? Come on, man. Anyhow. Who's next? Someone say something again. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we are an hour and 20 minutes in. I think we could begin to round the conversation up. I mean, am, yeah, I, right. am I hearing that, you know, feasibly there's nothing that we could do within the next few months to, to shift the paradigm, but it's going to be a longer term, more deliberate, more thoughtful process, and we should take this opportunity now to pull the team together and set the, set the process in train so that in a couple sure. of years we Correct. can roll up. Um, I think that's it, yeah. yeah. What's, what's still missing for me is what do we do this year? Are they going to just barrel through, pay the teachers millions of dollars to get the kids prepared for the exams? Just remembering that COVID would have deepened any existing inequities in terms of yes. access to the internet access to a computer, 
which schools have been able to sustain some amount of tuition during the COVID period, as opposed to which schools, everything just collapsed, everything fall down, the kids were left on their own. So it's going to worsen the situation that we've been talking about for the last hour, 20 minutes. So I just want to leave with a couple concrete ideas. What do we do right now? Let Daryl and Sandra go. <laughs> so, so, oh, you want me to go? I, I, like, I, like, I like Sandra's. Yeah, I like Sandra's thinking on it. I think Miss Sister advocate for these things, which she yeah. will elaborate on to, to take this. Yeah, let me just suggest. So I know that because there was a disadvantage of those children from the Movers and the Laventers and the East Port Spain, is why they need to go back to school. I have principal friends who couldn't find their standard five students because they can't go online. The only place they will be found is in the school because it's like a babysit, babysitting now. So you mm -hmm. continuing to perpetuate and not allowing them to come to school is going to be an issue, right? I'm just saying this is what. So you allow them still to go to, go to school. This is what I'm saying. So whether it is you pay this type, and I don't even want to go down the road. My thing is what is the solution to get those children back into some sort of system and structure because of the system that we're in, though it's failed, but that's a different point. What we could do is make sure we get our ideas heard. So for example, if these, these I, I don't know what are the various mechanisms, do we write the ministry? Is there a, is there a, a, a area, as I said, the same team, high level team chaired by the prime minister? Do we make sure that our voices are heard? Do we put in our suggestions? because they said that they will take those things under consideration. Who do we know on this group of people? Could we influence them? I mean, whatever it is, I think whoever your circle of influence, that's what you do, because that is what you have control over. So you take control of what you have control over. So to me, I have this, the reason why I came on is because I want to have discussions with two of the people that I know and I like, right? Because I know you, uh, how you may think and it might be aligned and so on. But you want to make sure that there's, there's some kind of alignment, you know, in terms of where we think we want this to go. I, I used to teach, so I understand. This is, this is almost personal in, in some cases. My children are still in school, so this is personal, I'm sorry. My friends, as I said, with principals from, from Nelson Street Girls, that these are my, co my colleagues, my peers. I want what is best for them and their communities. Mm -hmm. So if I could share some other ways in which we could do this, share some other ideas. And I think, as I said, the key thing is getting that team. And if we could influence some of those people who are on that team, then I think we, that's already a win. That's Funny, what we think raised, we need to do. You raise an important point about the importance of having kids in school. And I hope that the preparation is being done now. And you know, we have to see evidence of that over the next couple of months. What are the protocols mm -hmm. going to be? What are the systems going to be so that when the schools are reopened, they are as safe as possible in the context of COVID? Just an idea, you know, we have- No, no, but, but Sajlan, you're, you're, you're spot on, but you see what I think teachers are failing. Everybody's saying, okay, well, let's wait till September. Let's take tutor stance. Yeah. This issue is only one of risk. How is the risk different in September from August? You tell me how is the risk different? When you have more students, more classes in September, how is the risk different in August? Let's talk about risk, right? So and, I mean- Actually, just a quick thing on that. We're, what we're gonna see is those children who go back out to school, they're gonna be the canaries in the coal mine because they're gonna beta test whether the safety is going to work, whether this community oh, spread is, is, sure. is zero, they are going to find out. They're, they're, they're risking their lives. <laughs> we are risking their lives to find out if we okay in Trinidad and Tobago with COVID. No, no, but, but Dennis, do mm. okay, so let's look at risk. So you're risking 40 versus 400. You're telling people, let's do it in September. Is it that just they alone going to school in September? It's not the same standard one, two, three, four, five going to school in September versus just a standard five class? So, no, so this is what I'm saying. that is my we, point. We have, a, we have a quarter million children going to go back out in school in September. Correct. That, that are going to be, we know, it's, we know it isn't a normal day. 
Could you imagine? Correct. We know we're unruly. But COVID so we ain't going to have that. We, we're going to have at least half of the class and some of these fellas, they didn't want to wash their hands. But me washing my hand, boy, as a gunter. Hmm. Me, if any time some girls will be like, boy, wash your hand now. And then they're going to be like, girl, what do you want? She's going to get beaten the end, uh, after school because she have um, better smelling or maybe she have real nice um, hand sanitizer. Just imagine scenarios. We know we are unruly. And this is not about prestige or government or any kind of yeah. school. Nothing. We know Trinidad Nothing. ain't had the discipline. Okay, all right. You know, this whole COVID experience has made me... You know, <laughs> this COVID experience has made me question that because by and large, when I go around, I see people wearing their masks, sanitizing their hands. I feel so proud of us in terms of how we've been able to just lock this thing down and contain it. So let us extend... Oh. <laughs> let us... You know, what systems do we have to put in place to give the kids the best chance of succeeding? What information me, do they need? Let me, let me jump in and quick on this what protocols one. do we need to put in place? Well, but, and, but, 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 Dennis, this, mm -hmm. and we have Barbados. Barbados have a 20 page document. We've, we, it's already out on social media because this school started back in June for the exam in July. We don't need to go far. Let us look at that. How does it apply? Our, our classroom sizes are the same. If not, extrapolate. We have something we could work with now. Barbados has already started classes at least a week or two. They are our Trinidad neighbors. We Barbados close. And, and, and I'm not saying Trinidad is a big word. Trinidad is very different from Barbados. Dennis, yeah. Dennis, it doesn't matter. We know our culture more than anybody else. So we will adapt it to suit our environment, but we I have a fire I'm worried, because I know, I know, I just, I know what's going to happen. I am not worried. Do I, I am not worried. Do I expect the worst? The next thing, these cycles uh, that we're so committed to and invested in, where exams happen in March or exams happen in May and June and the new school comes Completely comes irrelevant in September. for now. Yeah. I mean, why do we have to stay wedded to that? Why can't we do an academic year start in <laughs> January? and take the time in terms of people's transition to another year group and just take some time to get things in order so that people could do the exams that are necessary, the preparation that is necessary without it being this mad rush. Just another idea I'm throwing out there. I, I, I want to jump in quick here. Um, so I just spoke on something early in the, um, the conversation, masterclasses. We, we, we're not applying technology in any meaningful way. Forget them laptops. I have three of them outside. They both, they, all of them, they, they didn't last a full year, right? Um, we need to understand what the technology is. First of all, PDF books, um, online learning. Every teacher is supposed to submit three terms of online fully day-to-day -day planning of, of every single lesson that they're going to have before they get back into school. You want, that five, you want that 20 million? This is what you had to do. Otherwise, don't come back. And that's my approach. You had to power foot down. Right now, I, I personally think that SEA didn't happen. We have to give these children a full reset. There are it is possible to let a child stay in that school until at least January, where they can get into that school. It's going to take probably another three or four years for the economy to recover. Why are we forcing these children to recover in 10 minutes? Right? No, but Pierre, I, I, I don't think we're forcing them. I think, I think we are, many people want the children to do it. So it's kind of split. I don't think we're forcing, you know, because if you, you look, there's a whole group, 100,000 members, oh, sorry, 10,000 members who represent students or whatever it is, that group, who want this exam to happen in, by August. So we have to be clear which stakeholders we're paying attention to. To me, it's all about the students. Remember the COVID sure. hit two weeks before the exams began were supposed to happen. So the children generally should have been prepared in most cases. I mean, so, but now what you have is the psychological impact and other impact of what this COVID brought. So we as parents could say, okay, my child is ready. 
or opt for the reset. But I don't think we should force every child to reset. That is just my view. Well, I, I, I respect that. And I think part of it, I, I was in standard five for two years because I was too young um, when I went into standard five the first time. So I spent two years and it didn't hurt me at all. So I don't think that it will be a, a problem for all of these. Some of these children will benefit from, from another year at SEU, right? That is if it's still there, right? Another year of preparation, full, balloon, hardcore preparation, yeah. Because let's be real here, SEA is not impossible to pass once you know how to communicate in English language. Once you have that understanding of the language, everything else falls into play. But managing stress, managing personal and parental expectations is also another part of it, the psychological part of it, as Daryl so aptly put all of those different uh, discussions together for us. But you know what? What we need to understand is we have a global issue that we're trying to deal with here with just trying to reset the same system. That has not worked for anything. Look at track and field. Track and field is they're saying that you're going to have fundamental changes to the way things are done. Look at uh, NBA. You look at any sport, because I'm a sports mm -hmm. journalist. Look yeah. at everything. I am pretty sure pan, when it starts back, is not going to be the same <laughs> pan. No. Right? There are things that are happening right now that are going to change the way we deal with life in fundamental ways. And we are not, we are, we are imposing on these children to get back into it, force them back into step. No, I don't think, I think we're sacrificing those children. This year, stick up in it, mark it down on the calendar. This is the year we fail our children. If we just put them back in there, I think it's going to be another step down this slippery slide that Trinidad and Tobago is already in. And we'll, we'll end on that note. We end in there. Guys. Hey, Stadrian, <laughs> thanks for hosting. Hey, Sanja, um, what was the other person's Mackie. name? I don't have the. Mackie. Mackie, thanks for joining in. And Daryl, of course. Um, so remember, um, I don't know when next we could probably have our next talk on something, but remember, just keep the conversation going. We didn't talk right. everything, right? Mm -hmm. But keep the conversation going. You never know when somebody might say, hey, you know what? Hey, whoa, that's a really good idea. So I'll, I'll prepare some notes as soon as I can. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. That'd be good. Thanks so much, Great. everybody. Cheers. All right, bye. Stay safe. Go on your mask. <laughs>